Now we'll take a look at the electric potter's wheel. Your posture is very important when you go to throw on the potter's wheel. If your wheel is too high or too low or your chair is too high or too low, you can strain your back. It's unlikely that you'll hurt yourself in one semester of ceramics, but it's very important for potters not to damage their wrists and their back especially. I'm pretty tall, so I sat at a wheel that has boots on the legs. These elevate the wheel a couple of inches higher than most of the wheels in the studio. So find a wheel that's appropriate for your height to begin with. Sometimes when I'm making big pots or small pots, I'll choose a different height wheel to find the one that's the most comfortable for what I'm making. The next thing to do is find a chair that's the correct height. I find it important to have my knee and my hip at about the same height. That way, when I'm sitting up, my back isn't bent. If I have the chair really low or really high, it makes my knee and hip unaligned. Sitting with my knees higher than my hips is not very comfortable for my back. I have to bend more in order to reach the wheel. The same thing is true if the chair is too high. I have to bend too much. So finding the correct wheel height, I recommend you sit at a chair that goes up and down until you figure it out. The next thing that's important about your chair is how close you are to the wheel. That sounds silly, but the distance from like my sternum to the middle of the wheel is important. If I have the chair too far back, again I have to bend over a lot in order to reach the wheel. What I do is I put my chair right up to the wheel so that I'm as close to the wheel as I can get. Also, it helps for me to be able to set my hands down and reach the wheel rather than having to extend my arms out. I have much more control if I am close to the wheel. Unfortunately, these wheels are really big and the splash pans are really wide, so your knees get spread out in order to get close, but it's worth it. I'll show you how to throw without a splash pan as well, so that it's more comfortable to sit at the wheel. Never leave anything on the wheel, because if you come in and turn the gas pedal on and you have something on the wheel, it may go flying off when you turn the switch on. There are two switches on the potter's wheel. One switch turns the wheel on and off, and the other controls which direction it goes. If I turn the wheel on and it's going the wrong direction, I can click the switch twice to change the direction. Most wheels make a squeaking noise when they're going in the clockwise direction. So if you are going to throw left-handed, you should find a wheel that doesn't make that noise if you can. I leave the gas pedal up on top of the wheel. The reason for that is, again, your posture. If you throw with your foot on the gas pedal, now my back is actually bent because one knee is higher than the other. If you have to throw with your foot on the gas pedal, you probably should put your other foot on a brick. If I do that though, now my chair is too low and the wheel is too low as well. You don't really need to change the speed of the wheel until you're in between gestures on the wheel. So I find it most easy to control the wheel speed using my hand. It's better for my posture. Which way should the wheel go? If you learn how to throw in Europe or America and you're right-handed, the wheel is going to go counterclockwise most of the time. If you learn how to throw in Japan or the Far East, it's probably going to go clockwise. It doesn't really matter. I can throw with the wheel going in either direction. And potter's tools are really simple, so I can hold them with either hand just as well. Many of my students are ambidextrous enough that it doesn't matter which way the wheel goes and I'm going to suggest that you try one day with the wheel going one way and then one way one day with the wheel going another way just to see which way is more comfortable for you. For most of us though it has to do with which hand you're dominant with holding tools. With the wheel going this way 
you're usually going to hold tools with this hand and touch the clay at about 4.30 on the clock. So when you're cutting clay away or holding a rib on the outside of the pot, this is by dominant hand. When I go to trim, the tool is going to be again in my dominant hand on this side of the pot. So that's the reason why right-handed people find it most comfortable for the wheel to go counterclockwise. It doesn't matter which way you choose to go, try them both. It's very important to recognize that clay is abrasive. I don't wear jewelry or watches because the clay will scratch your jewelry. It's also important not to press your hands against the wheel head. You want to let your hands skim right above the wheel head. This is cool and wet and you won't feel your skin being sanded off. So don't do this. Also, be careful of the back of your fingernails because if you press down against the clay in order to get underneath it, you can sand off the back of your fingernails as well. So once the clay starts to spread out on the wheel head, there's sand underneath your hand. So don't press against the wheel head. When you're done throwing, you probably need to remove the splash pan to clean it. If it's not really messy, you can just stick a sponge in there and bail out the water. But most of the time, you have to take it off. There are two tabs on each side. Press down on these to unhook the splash pan. You can see that this tips it, so before you unhook the splash pan, it might pay to get the water out of there so it doesn't dump on your feet. This part, you just scooch off and slide this around. We'll go over to the sink and clean this. When you're done throwing, you need to clean up after yourself. The sink has two sides, the regular side and the clay trap side. Definitely don't stick your hands in this water. It's standing water and it's pretty nasty. This is to catch clay so it doesn't plug the drain though. So if you're rinsing off uh, clay covered tools, do it over this side. If you're just washing your hands, you can do it wherever you want. Your throwing bucket is going to have water, tools, and slip in it. What I do is pour the water off through my fingers. This way I can catch any tools that are still in the bucket. Then put the slip through this screen. This will catch any other tools that you just missed. There was a rib in the bottom of my bucket, so the screen will keep it from getting into the clay. I don't usually wash my tools in between throwing sessions, so it's up to you. Any clay that's on top of the screen will end up drying out and we'll throw it away because we can't put stiff clay into the recycle bucket. So if you have clay on top, push it through the screen. Same thing goes with your splash pan. That's good to go. The splash pan doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to get it clean for the next person. And if the part where your pants hit it is clean, it's probably okay. So slide the small part on first on the opposite side and then pick up the back to get this to go underneath a piece of metal on the wheel. Zigzag it back and forth and push. It's ready for the next person.